This is a brand new 1959 Epiphone Les Paul, courtesy of my friends at Earl Teat Music in Del Mar, Delaware. We're going to give it a going over today, right here on Geargasm. The joys of being a YouTuber. Hi everybody, welcome to Geargasms. I'm your host, Alan Barnes. Yes, once again, my good friends at Earl Teat Music in Del Mar, Delaware, Chris and Dean, they have hooked me up with this brand new 1959 Epiphone Les Paul. 1959, how's that? You said it was brand new, right, right? Well, I'm gonna tell you in just a second. But first, if you're new to the channel, I'd like to ask you to like and subscribe. This channel is kind of like TGI Fridays. When you're done, you say, TGI didn't get amoebic dysentery this time. Celebrate mediocrity. Yeah, so I was up there paying for the Epiphone Les Paul special that I just did a video on and ended up buying. And I was so attracted to this the first time I was up there. I said, can I please take this home? It just caught my eye for the, the, the first reason was this sort of satin finish. Now Epiphone says the satin finish is inspired by the Gibson VOS spec. It's not nitro. It's not nitrocellulose. It is a satin finish, but it is just gorgeous, and the feel of it is just wonderful. I really think that it, it, it makes the, the top look so much better. Of course, the standard Les Paul recipe, mahogany body, when they call it an aged maple top. We have a mahogany neck. We have an Indian laurel fretboard, 12-inch radius. The standard Les Paul sort of medium jumbo frets. Graphite nut. Vintage uh, Cluson style tuners, 18 to 1 gear ratio. When I change the strings, I really notice that. Now, the pickups in this are the Gibson Burst Bucker Pros. Not an Epiphone version of the Burst Bucker Pros, actual Gibson Burst Bucker Pros. I actually have a Gibson with the Burst Bucker Pros in it, and I'm here to tell you exact mundo. It has Mallory 150 polyester film tone capacitors, like you know what that is or even care, but it does have CTS pots, switchcraft switches, and jack. Standard Gibson knobs, they have the pointers in, just like my real, real Gibson. They're calling the, the profile of this neck a rounded C, the rounded C59, and it is very, very beefy. I don't know if it's quite as beefy as a 59, but, but she thick. Switching over to the back, we have a gloriously beautiful toggle switch plate on the back saying Epiphone Limited Edition. I'm not opening this up. They are, this is not mine and I'm not buying it this time. The back of the neck, the, the fact that it doesn't have that sticky gloss on it, I love the feel of that. They should just, even if they do gloss tops, they should just skip the gloss on the back of all their necks. Standard strap buttons, just so nice. I've not been able to find a single, single blemish. The frets feel really good. There's no sprout. They're polished well. This guitar is $899.99. And one thing we have not talked about yet, it comes with a case. It comes with a case. Oh my goodness, and it's a real nice hard case with the pink plush, just like the old school Gibson. Oh my gosh, just the hardware on this thing, super solid. Nobody else in this price point, Fender, none of them are doing a case with a $900 guitar. You never see that, so kudos to Epiphone for that. Let's plug this thing into a Marshall as God intended us to and get right into it. Now, I normally start off clean, but screw that today. We are going to, this is a Les Paul. We're going to crank it into the Marshall. We are on the Ultra Gain channel. The gain is at about 11 o'clock. It's reasonable. Now, I did just restring it with nines, so I haven't stretched the strings yet. So the tuning might drift a little bit for all you YouTube commenters out there. I'm, I will try to keep it in tune. It is Les Paul, after all. Now, before we get too far into this, this has the exact same Burst Bucker Pro pickups that my Gibson Les Paul standard has. And I've, I've A-B'd them. It's not going to translate on the video, so I'm not going to bother. Plus, half of you would say it sounds exactly the same, and the other half would say they sound nothing alike. I'm here to tell you exact 
Amundo. <laughs> And if you're familiar with the Burst Bucker Pro, it's not an overly hot pickup. It, it purports to sound like the original PAF, so it's, it's, they're not super high gain pickups. But this is a 59 replica. That's not what you're looking for in this. But the Burst Bucker Pro, to me, it has a lot of high end, but uh, not a lot of high end in the way some of the high gain pickups have. There's, there's just a lot of top end that, that's just kind of really nice, and it just cuts across. <laughs> Let's hear that middle position. Single notes on the middle. Oh, that was ugly. Love that metal position. Let's go to the neck. There it is. Ace. I'm doing ace licks. Why not? It's a less ball. So let's just hear some. I'll just go through the three pickups. You just have to follow along. I won't have to announce. Now I'm going to play some lead. Now I'm going to play some rhythm. You don't care about that. You, you, you can hear what I'm doing, and it's not good. Listen how tight that neck pickup is with that amount of gain on it. It's not a ton of gain, but Jesus. Now, you notice one thing I haven't done is the tone. Now, that's all the tone all the way off just the, on the bridge pickup. That's more usable than a lot of them are. That. Burst buckers have a lot of top end chime. I love that about them. A lot of people do not love that about them. You don't need to hear the tone there. Let's hear the neck. Is that the woman tone? You wanna get down. On to the next segment. What's in the next segment? More gain. All right, check out my mini pearl hang tag a dangling for this next segment because we about to get turned. You heard that, didn't you? Oh. Now I'm not gonna talk a lot during this segment. And I know that that disappoints a lot of you, but we are just gonna go through the three pickups. I'm gonna play the the most inglorious, poorly executed riffs you've ever heard in your life. You'll comment about them, but you'll be back next week, won't you? Why that riffs in my head lately? Neck pickup. 
Till further notice. <laughs>pickups while I'm tuning it. That's how you can really hear the character of a pickup. We're going to turn the echo back off. We're just going to blow through some rhythm sounds, all three pickups. Rando, noodle that I don't even know what to call it there's just some sort of a squonk that comes in with that metal position how about if I get the correct meter one two three four still on the neck pickup. Hear all that high end? It doesn't sound muddy or mushy. That's what I love about the Burst Bucker Pros and the neck pickup in particular. Now that's, that's, a, a, lot, that's a lot of gain coming from a Marshall and you can just still hear the clarity between all the notes. Just absolutely gorgeous. Let's try that, let's try that she riff again. feel that fat neck that fat yeah it is that is this is the real deal it may not be as c-shaped it feels a little little shallower but yeah it's it's girthy that's what she so said. nice we're gonna hear it clean And last but not least, the cleans, the cleans, them cleans. I don't really love the bridge pickup clean, but I don't really love a clean bridge pickup on most any guitar. But I'll show it to you still. See it barks? Pretty too, you can do pretty. that Skinner test. It's kind of a maybe. You're gonna get your ass kicked with that tone. You don't want to try that tone with Sweet Home Alabama, son. Not in the wrong place. No, you don't. Middle position. Play like little clean leads with that if you had talent. 
could make the note sound really pretty, unlike myself. That's that middle position. The neck. Oh, I suck. I suck. Oh, <laughs> pickups make such a difference as Burst Bucker Pros in this. Try a little boost. Cleans. I always struggle with cleans. I always struggle with all of them. It's like, whatever will I play so that they hear the notes sound so beautiful? They sound lovely with a ninth chord. Just about sub that in for an acoustic sound if you needed to. What other clean sounds can I show you? Maybe with some delay? Will that help? It's kind of hot, ain't it? I hate this Canyon pedal. The, the Electro Harmonics Canyon. I'm going to do a video on how much I hate it. Look for that in the upcoming. Busted. Sorry, Jimmy. Sorry, Jimmy. Yeah, so it's just gorgeous clean. It really is. I, 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 I know I'm falling far short of the mark of showing you just, 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 just how gorgeous it is. But ga, 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 ga. it's nice. What did we learn today? We learned that Epiphone's doing a really good job getting this big, beefy 59 neck profile into the hands of, of customers that don't have a ton of money. It's not for everyone, but it feels great. That's what she said. We also learned that Epiphone is not playing when it comes to components. They have spec this thing out with real, genuine Gibson parts and a lot of the same components you find in the, in the big boy Gibsons, and you can certainly hear and feel the difference. And finally, we learned that, yes, there are guitar companies out there who can figure out how to get a case into the customer's hand with a guitar that costs less than $1,000. Once again, thanking Chris and Dean up at Earl Teat Music in Del Mar, Delaware. When they loan me stuff, what that means is I have to belly crawl less to my Chinese overlords to get gear to share with you guys on this channel. And these days, that's getting more and more important.
As always, I thank you for the time that you spend with the channel. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Tell some of your ratty ass, ghetto, mucho, obnoxious friends about Geargasms. You know they're going to fit right in here perfectly. If you like something and you want to support it, you can buy merch. That's what I do. That's what these people have done. You can too. It really helps the channel. Whatever you do in the next seven days, don't tell Kevin Bacon about it. Did you know he played guitar? His brother didn't either. Aww. But play more guitar, watch less of this, and keep coming back here week after week for more Geargasm.